Hey everyone, I'm Levi Polzin at Levi Warner on Instagram. And I'm Sonny J at Tattoo Della Cruz on Instagram. And this is Under the Surface. Um, today we're going to be covering this issue of Skin Art Magazine, Volume 1, Issue Number 2, 1992. But before we get into that, just a little business. I've got my new dragon print, um, G Clay printed on high quality watercolor paper. This, among many others, on DesertSundries.com. I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, I'll also have these print pins um, available pretty soon. They're high quality, good backs on them, uh, little chrysanthemum pins that I made a number of years ago and I actually just found again, thought I'd lost them. Anyways, let's get into it. All right, tattoo mag extravaganza. Um, so I have been going online shopping on <laughs> Levi's uh, got a problem. I've got a problem. I literally have like <laughs> probably something like uh twenty five or fifty more that literally just got dropped. I just got a notification um today that they all got and it's a bunch of uh early tattoo magazines. Great. So tattoo magazine. Um some from the nineties some from the 2000s because I wanted to go through kind of what I really remember a lot from tattooing. Sure. Um, yep. And kind of give that. But anyways, we've got these. Savage, which will be pretty cool. I'm not sure we're going to be able to show a bunch of these when we do go through because there's a bunch of naked ladies Lots in there. Lots of nakedness. And God knows um, people for some reason hate naked people. Well, it's called Savage for a reason. Yeah. So not everyone's savage. Unless you're Savage, if you see that, uh, <laughs> don't tune into those episodes unless you're a Savage one, bro. Right. It's going to get Savage. But today, task at hand, skin art number two, 1992. Um, the cover, first off, is um, something. It's weird. It's kind of arty. It sort of reminds me of uh, that Alice Donut cover. Alice Donut? Yeah. What's that? Uh, rock band of the 90s, kind of psych rock. I don't remember Alice I'll Donut. I'll turn you on to it. All right. It's good. Alice <laughs> Donut. I don't remember that at all. Um, it reminds you of that? What the cover of that? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if, if you're familiar. There's a cover of uh, there. There's an artist. It's sort of uh, kind of reinventing the Christ pose. You know where he's you know uh, not necessarily dying, but it's it's the one where he's looking up. He's got the crown of thorns and he has that real forlorn look mm. on his face. And they oh they, yeah, yeah, the classic like really Catholic one where his head is bent over yeah, like this. Yeah, essentially and it's that. Right, right, right. And then um, on the cover, it's reinvented. I, I'm bummed because I can't remember the artist that, that did this, but um, that kind of was a big deal for him, and they used his image on the on the cover. But rather than the crown of thorns, it's this kind of strange. The dude's a little bit femme, but he's a little bit rough. And then there's not a crown of thorns. He's actually in rollers. Mm. So it's, I, I don't know, it's bizarre. It's cool. It was of the 90s. <laughs> On the back, <laughs> Spalding and Rogers uh, tattoo catalog. Once again. So, I mean, they're pretty much in every tattoo mag from what mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. at, at this point. I mean, if they're not on the back cover, they're usually First like page. the like in this page or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or in this. Um, this has, let me just make sure it's all lined up for y'all. Um, just kind of goes into what they're trying to get through with this magazine. I don't know. Who cares about that? We're kind of just here for the picks. Mm -hmm. um, well, this is great. It's highly organized. Yeah, that was the thing I really liked about um, Skin Art Magazine was like, you know, it kind of just it divided everything into these sections mm -hmm. in which um, Mickey Vallejo who later on, I feel like kind of adopted in his uh, magazines, which were Tattoo Life and Tattoo Energy. Mm -hmm. um, and he kind of still does that with his magazine layouts. And I, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I know. That's awesome. It's you know, just kind of a level above. Yeah. You know, it's definitely a level above. And I think the work is a level above. And that's what I remember when I was first picking these up. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if I was quite picking these up um, in the 90s. I remember seeing them around, but I don't remember if I was buying them. Mm -hmm. um, I was a little young and just a little obsessed with punk rock music at the time that I I wasn't just, I didn't, I <laughs> didn't, didn't really have a ton of money. So yeah, I was just sure. like, you know, these were, you know, how much was this? Five bucks. You know, if I was going to spend five bucks at that time, I was going to probably spend it on... Comic books. Comic books <laughs> or a punk show or a punk shirt, you right. know. Or a button. Or a button. Um, 
Yeah, no, I, I definitely remember these. Uh, me and a good friend of mine who actually ended up tattooing as well uh, would pass them in the hallway in, in high school. You know, let me, let me check out that, that new magazine from the third period or, or for during lunch. Well, um, and I mean, you started tattooing in 1998, too. Yeah. So, I mean, were you buying any of these in in the late 90s or anything? You know, it's funny. Like, I, I remember tons of these covers, and there were tattoo magazines everywhere. But honestly, I, I don't truly remember purchasing them. Yeah. I think just acquiring them, like, you know, from my friend, uh, you know, or, you know, at, hanging out at the shop or something like that, um, just picking them up. Um, but actually purchasing them not so much and then again i don't even think like the uh we, we either had to go to the headstand mm -hmm. or to the uh the dirty bookstore to get a hold of tattoo magazines they, they weren't on any kind of cut on any kind of shelves yeah so the i remember seeing them all the time because of, I, as i mentioned before my dad usually had them because he liked him and his friends would always be talking about what tattoos they were going to get but um i always went to this place called shinders which I can't remember, there was one in like Maplewood, Minnesota. I lived in Stillwater, Minnesota, and my grandfather um, would take me there to go buy comic books. And I remember seeing them, um, but I didn't really feel like I could buy them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, so at, at some point, like I'm talking like early to maybe mid 90s at the, you know, 94 at the latest. Right. Um, but I was buying a lot of comic books there, and I remember seeing them. You know, I'd walk past and I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Um, but I never, I don't think I really ever remember buying any because I just didn't think I really could um, just do it. I, I thought like my mom. Right, you had or to my be 18 or something. Yeah, and my grandfather was like, he had a bunch of uh, tattoos on his forearms from um, World War II and he really kind of disliked it. And so I always felt weird if, you know, if he was taking me and I, He'd be like, "Oh, what'd you get?" And then I'd show him a tap magazine. Check it out. He probably would have like blown up. Or yeah, something. yeah. It. I. I think it kind of like falls in line with. Um, I don't know. Just being like a, a young teen and those things that you weren't sure if you were allowed to have yet. So you definitely just kept them out of sight. You know, from the parents. For sure. Um, like I. Like I have a list. I remember. Um, during one summer, we were doing a road trip, and uh, I, I took all my all my stuff in my backpack. And we stayed at a friend of my, my mom's and the dad of the house, uh, I got lazy. I left my stuff out and he busted me with the no Nothing Shocking album. You remember that cover? Mm -hmm. uh, a new issue of Heavy Metal. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, it might have been a juxtapose. There's there's one more thing. Maybe it was a tattoo magazine. But yeah, uh, I almost got, you know, I was kicked out of my, my mom's friend's house for, for that one. <laughs> yeah, I... Um Kind of on that same note, my one friend, his parents were like super straight laced and like they were hella rich, like crazy rich. And I remember going, his dad had a library. That's how like like the the quintessential <laughs> library you think of like of like a rich white dude's house. Like Daddy's with, in the library. Like with the full on fucking sliding ladder and everything. Right. Um, but I remember one time my friend was like, oh, look at the comics my dad has. Oh. You're into comic books. Look at these comics my dad has. And they were all like R. Crumb and like the really 60s, Yo. 70s alt comics where it was just like boobies and uh, people getting stabbed in the head. Right. And uh, I don't think he had tattoo magazines, <laughs> but I think I, I stole one of those and my mom found it. And then I had to like, there was like a weird conversation I had to have with like, a, I was caught with it, and then I had to say it. I got it from my friends. We took it from my friend's dad. Anyways, whatever. I, I digress. <laughs> I, for as much of like a kind of rebellious teen as I was, like I feel like I played. There was certain realms in which I kind of played in the with the rules or whatever. Sure, sure. Um, I I do want to note. Uh, I went through a couple of these with Julie. I tried to not really look at them because I, I wanted them to be fresh. Uh -huh. um, but I handed them to Julie. I was like, oh, check these out. And the first thing she noticed is like, this is uh, Kevin Quinn is the person she learned how to tattoo from. Oh, killer. So first and foremost, right there, this is Julie, my girlfriend, Julie Boleyn. Uh, her mentor has got apparently have like four tattoos in here. But that the first one Sick. right there. Sick. And he tattooed a bunch of people in... 
LA in the 90s. He tattooed like Guns N' Roses dudes. I think Guns N' Roses took him on tour. Yeah, yeah, I've heard some of those stories. From uh, Motley awesome. Crue, all those guys. I think I saw some picture of him like last year or something like that, like tat with the dudes from like Buck Cherry. Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. But yeah, no, I mean, it's it's pretty cool, you know? Like, and that was of a time. And uh, I've heard a bunch of stories of actually like him covering up old Bob Roberts stuff because oh, wow. um, on a lot of gay men in the the 90s and whatnot because bob was such a, a homophobic old dude that he mm -hmm. just they're like i don't want it i don't want to wear this dude's tattoos anymore oh okay um, wow i don't know if i should really say that on, <laughs> well, out, in, out in the world but yeah. apparently it was a thing for a minute it's a tidbit I, and that, that being said i think this is a really cool interesting tattoo super neat very kind of weird see-through tribal with waves and some hooks and sharp stuff yeah balanced out by some soft pretty stuff you know, Seems it's okay. interesting, and I'm sure you could be critical if you wanted to. And there's a lot of this stuff we could be critical, but I kind of just want to look at it because seeing so much of this stuff, it's kind of like 80s comics for me. Like, there is a certain place in my heart for it always. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I uh, will cheer on a home job piece of shit just because I love tattoos. And it's fun to see that kind of stuff, especially when it's highly dated. Speaking of, look at that. That old guy, Jason. Atkinson. Wow. Yeah. Um, I mean, we so much uh, associate Guy with like biomech type stuff, mm -hmm. but there was a really long time where he kind of did what most people did all through the 80s and 90s, which was a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. But you would always notice his like really techy flair to it. Right, right. Yeah. It's like there, there aren't like those crazy standouts yet or. Philip Blue right there. So much. Yeah, that's fucking amazing. Jill Jordan. That chain is phenomenal. I mean, oh my god! I think even by <laughs> by uh, twenty twenty standards, twenty twenty one standards, that that's pretty rad. Absolutely, that, that's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever had that much patience with one tattoo. I've done a couple, that's quite incredible. a few of those. Yeah, you ever done the one where it's like just straight around somebody's neck and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Are the uh, around the wrist? Mm -hmm. This Bill Salmon piece is rad. That's so good. Yeah, super cool. More Philip Blue. Honestly, this one doesn't totally work for me. Um, if I'm if I'm quite honest, um, you know. But I like to see that. I like to see people that I associate only good tattoos with um, doing something. And this isn't a bad tattoo. It's just like it is the. There's so many ideas in this. Right, right. That it's just suffering from so many right. ideas. And it's almost not necessarily him. You know, no. obviously, uh, this, this person led the way. In, in that tattoo. Well, and this was such the time of it, right? Like Ed Hardy, when he started Tattoo, um, what was it? When he started Tattoo City, or what was the one before when it was just his private studio in the upstairs? Was that Tattoo City? No, it wasn't Tattoo mm -hmm. City as well. What was that one called? I'm forgetting yeah. the name of that, but it was when he just had his own private studio. Right. And then eventually uh, a couple guys ended up moving up there with him. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, he kind of paved the way for that kind of dream, what I associate call that dream weaver, you know, type stuff, where it's just like, give me your fucking wildest dreams. Right, yeah, yeah. I think that was taken, uh, I, it, it, that's kind of a hit or miss sort of approach. I think it can be great, but it Hold can on, also Mary, one be. Second. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna adjust your microphone just so we can make sure we get good sound there. Awesome. Cool. I think it, it can also, you know, turn into that like 10, 10 pounds of, something in a five pound bag of yeah something. there's a lot there's you know a hand holding a face that's clearly like a goddess with <laughs> you know tree roots you know uh, a von dutch flying eye that's coming out of waves which is mm -hmm. turning into like ghost birds into palm trees <laughs> and sharks <clears throat> and you know uh piano keys into like there's pyramids and is that a kitchen sink <laughs> that, that or a is. bag of coke. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all those. It's it's a it's a kitchen sink full of a bag bags oh, of coke. Got it, got it. Who's this is phenomenal? That's Hutchinson again. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that's really cool. Heck yeah. I think that's one of those dream weaving things that he probably simplified the ideas a little bit. Right, He's, right. This guy probably had even more, and he was just like, no, this will work. But still, like really pushing it. Yeah, I mean, pretty bold 
cutting across all that negative space across yeah, the that's, the that's front of that huge and the, the bubbles love the bubbles and the bubbles are kind of fun like there's a significant number going on in there those bubbles man like you saw those a ton in the 90s didn't you in the mm -hmm. late 80s like i'd say like 88 mm -hmm. to maybe 93 i think that was the period of time there <laughs> 88 <laughs> to 93 but the spalding and rogers catalog that we always refer to uh -huh. is full of bubbles is it full of bubbles it's so full of bubbles <laughs> <laughs> more philip this issue's got a ton of philip Lou. holy uh -huh. crap that's more philip Lou. carrie barba yeah that thing's crazy that is cool really worked more philip Lou. here's that back piece that we i think uh oh yeah yeah we've we seen a couple times time. and mm -hmm. um and whatnot but this is and it says, you know, like it work in progress. That's pretty cool to see. That's a nice. And touch. he's working at Fun City Tattoo in New York. Huh. So that's rad. I, um, I thought this concept was so great. Oh my god! I really wanted that. Did you want that? At I one did point? want that. Good. I for sure. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think if you're around our age range uh, and we're into tattoos, how did you not want this? For sure. What's mine gonna look like though? Oh man, my mom's boyfriend has a full one of his full arms is just nothing but um the bones on his on his forearm and down Crazy. his hand yeah he wanted me to like redo it and stuff like that i i didn't say no but i didn't say yes didn't have time yeah i just didn't have time a lone wolf yeah that's pretty good international magazine right now already yeah sting from germany <laughs> This is pretty cool. I'm pretty sure this is taken from a comic book. Um, this little yeah, yeah. That well, it's absolutely. I think it's uh, Dark Phoenix from the X Men saga. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, I can't say for sure, but I would almost say that it's Arthur Adams is the illustrator. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, um, if I'm thinking about who was on X Men at that at around this time of when you know probably before because this is published in '92, so you know maybe somewhere around 90 right you know i don't know the steve ferguson um oh that's so good that thing is rad so good i love that illustration here's a dave lum that doesn't have a penis or some giant weird gotta be a vagina dick. or gotta boobs be a dick in there somewhere come on there's no dick in it not one I bet you if you were sitting here, you'd point it out. You're like, no, nope, I'm snugging it in Okay, right okay. If, if you, if you kind of trace the back of this thing, you could look at that. It's maybe the head of the penis. Sure. Uh, and the, this, oh, it's a little phallic. Oh, if oh, you were searching. <laughs> a little bit of odd penetration on that leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this is a pretty cool, like, bio, or, or a mech, um, what is that, a grasshopper? Yeah, I think it's a grasshopper. No, that's a praying mantis. Oh, praying mantis, yeah. yes. That thing's cool. That's killer. Like it's I said, I think like we said in uh, one of our last episodes together, you know, I love Dave Lum's tattoos and they were mm -hmm. so solid mm -hmm. and perfect. But God, I did not want any of the imagery he ever it's tattooed. Hard on. to look at. Um, so this oh. is where we're getting into some where it's chests. Chests. Well, with the oh, this was backs. Sorry. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So now we're into chests. Okay. That's that's some great cool little like. Nouveau floral elements and yeah, stuff pretty. like that. It's pretty. Like you even see there's shadows of this kind of stuff in um, old Jerry stuff when a lot of like the sparrows are holding like they're holding like a little like flower. Oh, ribbon. yeah, I know what you're talking but about. But it kind of turns sure. into some of this kind of sure. filigree type stuff. I completely see that kind of a trip. The old uh, disguise this scar for me. Well, and they didn't even like try to go over it or anything if anything i feel like they're highlighting it i feel like that person wanted that highlighted in some this, way yeah yeah you're probably right i mean this is tech typically my approach when somebody does want to you know like uh, cover a scar and i always say i want to tattoo your scar but i'll distract from it but no that's that you're and uh vivine lazonga uh -huh. uh, did that one she yeah. did she's still doing pretty great work out there awesome yeah um, and I mean, would it be 1992 if we didn't have blue and like kind of magenta right oh, next to each man, other? My two least favorite colors. I'm sorry. And they were just <laughs> always, I mean, how many, um, I mean, I was still doing blue and magenta, uh, highlighted dual light source with, oh. a, with a yellow light source. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the blue light source, yeah. uh, lotus flowers into 2000 <laughs> when I started. 
Jonathan Shaw uh-huh. with some weird tribal the What are you o- going to call it? The Oni going the wrong way. But this guy totally wanted, because it's got the flames and everything, he mm-hmm. straight up wanted uh, um, the Ozzy. The Ozzy one. Yeah, very, very and because it's even Aussie. pointed the same way that Ozzy's is, but it's on right. the wrong chest. Wrong chest. So I, I wonder if Jonathan Shaw was like, "We should go, it should go the other way," and be like, "No, Ozzy's is this oh. way." He's like, "Yeah, but Ozzy's is on his other chest." <laughs> you're not Ozzy, bro. You're not Ozzy, bro. Whenever getting tattooed, just before you walk in, remember you're not Ozzy, and then proceed. Some more Vivian stuff. I like that. Do you? I mean, I don't know as a tattoo, but I just I don't know. I like it. I like the kind of psychedelic nature of it mm-hmm. and it's clearly tattooed very well mm-hmm. um the placement's a little odd for me because if you look at that it's, one feather is going across like her whole stomach for sure yeah like it's, i feel like i would place it in the center maybe maybe i'm just oh here's her center line so it yeah, might be yeah. going it might be more like that and i just can't tell yeah that's it's it's a weird one but i think i like it this is like the one. beginning of that um Remember the boob chandelier that was like really hot for like a right. I mean, I mean, it still the, is, the but like boob chandelier. the boob chandelier. This is like 1992 boob chandelier. Uh huh. Uh huh. More Dave Lum. Definitely getting into that more grotesque stuff here that um, I associate him with. Right. It, it's it's so great and comic booky though. You know, just like such a weird little illustration. That's fun. Yeah, it's like R crumb. Uh huh. R crummy yeah. kind of feeling. You don't get to do a whole lot of that kind of stuff. Or at least I never got to do a whole lot of that kind of stuff. But that looks like a blast to me. I definitely did um, for a minute. Mm-hmm. I was kind of into this. Um, him and um, I'm going to forget. Uh, I'm spacing his name. But he was out of like, uh, oh, man. Never mind. Forget it. We'll, we'll sit here forever. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, nothing else really on this. Really, I have a big mosquito, shitty mosquito on the back oh. of my neck that I got from being in Minnesota. Um, (laughs) It's mandatory. uh, Yeah, well, I just hated mosquitoes so much. You just dealt with them. And I got this huge one on the back of my neck. But then it just ended up being like a a joke for everybody to play on me. They they just slapped me in the back Uh of the neck. I'm like, I got it, bro. I was like, oh, fuck fuck my life. Yeah, I did fuck up. (laughs) <laughs> now no, but now it's so fucked up and terrible. Nobody can even tell what it is. And your hair is so long. <laughs> yeah, it's short right now. What are you talking about? <laughs> These skulls are great. Yeah, that's a tough tattoo right there. That is. That's a mean ombre. Yeah, that thing is cool. He'll kick your ass. Fuck yeah. Even tougher though. Mm. Maybe the shrunken heads. The shrunken heads. Demon heads. That's no. that. Oh yeah, I guess oh, you're right. Yeah, devil, they do. Got the yeah, this one's kind of like got some horns and stuff on it too. The Viking. He's got a little bit of everything here. He's got a mummy. Uh huh. Um, I don't even know I what want the fuck. all my favorite heads. This thing is dope. Debbie Lenz, uh, artistic demographics. Everything had der- a lot of had derma and demographics. Right, yeah. Um, the first tattoo shop I worked in was called Permanent Skin Art. But I think at one point it was called like something dermographics like permanent dermographics or something like that i once worked at the skin factory for a little while yeah there was so much skin and (laughs) and whatnot like what would you have done if i i should have named the shop now something skin the skin shop skin skins damn the skin (laughs) shop is such a sweet name (laughs) the skin shop You'd have to paint it, the, all the walls black and drip silver paint from the oh, from the wrappers. Or, or if I was like more of like a um, like a uh, what what do you fucking call that? Like kind of like all those like uh, gothy dudes that are into like all the gears and shit like that. What is that called? That's uh, damn. They're gonna hate us. I know. I can't remember what the fuck that shit's called. But if you're gonna call that, like you call it like skin altier. Oh. oh. Hold on, your little poof fell off. Oh my. Oh. That's all right. It's no big deal. Long arm, long, long arm Levi. Let me put your little puff back on here. So I'm sure that's gonna blow up on some people's earbuds, but we'll edit that out or something. Maybe not. Maybe we'll just let you live with that one. Don't listen to this one on earbuds. Duh. <laughs> Anyways, um, some kid commented because I I couldn't get the music levels right when I first was doing this. Because um, when I when I made the the intro music to this uh i don't know i just always listen to everything loud because i'm deaf Same. and uh and some kid commented like dude turn the music down <laughs> it 
blows my earbuds off every time it comes on. And I just like keep on thinking of this kid just like getting shook back like the remember the THX um like surround sound uh from like the eighties, like the, the, the guy getting blown back right. in the chair. I see that, but like the kid's ears just blowing off. He's sitting on the bus. Oh uh, yeah. Let's see what else we got here. This weird dragon demon snake is pretty mm-hmm. rad. Mm-hmm. Oh, Philip Lou. So there you go. That's why. All that Celtic and tribal is kind of cool too. Yeah. When you when you wonder if your new client is some sort of grand wizard or something. Yeah. I mean, I see. It's like such a tough thing because you're like, oh, I get it. Like, as white people, mostly white people don't have a lot of things to like you know look back at my heritage mm-hmm. or like you know that goes real far back um the one thing a lot of us have is like viking shit mm-hmm. so it's like oh maybe you're just really into your heritage or maybe you're racist i'm not quite sure <laughs> right. maybe is you just cool? hate anybody who's not white <laughs> right. by the way i'm not white <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i love i that that has to always be something uh for you as like a non-white person like Oh man, uh, you want me to tattoo what on you? I mean, mm. let me let me feel this one out a little bit. I need a longer consultation. I'm gonna talk to some of the guys I work with. <laughs> I remember this piece. I think this piece might have got a lot of play. Do you remember this, or do you just remember the Olivia painting that it's based off of? Okay, I think because that's be what right. I'm associating yeah, with. Yeah, I think you're right. Look at that crazy hand. Where is it going? What's it doing? It's like going way back like oh, this. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, human figure. Yeah, and you have a great fucking reference with this Olivia reference. I mean, she's mm-hmm. a phenomenal mm-hmm. fucking illustrator, and you still fucking didn't nail it. I hear Shaw's well, the famous. Well, probably what happened is I bet that shell wasn't in the drawing or something like that, and he's like, oh, "I really no. want to want to blow it on a shell or Ooh, something." Like you're holding onto a conch. And you're like, "Fuck my life." <laughs> um, what do we got here? Fun city yet? Oh yeah. Oh, Jonathan. This is when Jonathan Shaw owned um, Fun City. This is cool. I definitely remember these ads. Great ad, yeah. Um, I mean, shout just... out Big Steve who owns um, Fun City now. Hey, bud. That's a Philip Blue. That's why you're liking it. Yeah, well, Philip Blue was um, doing so much of this ad design for a mm-hmm. lot of tattooers. He still does. You'll see something like, "You didn't draw that, bro." Right. Which I always think is odd for a tattooer, like to get another artist to, to do to get your... another artist right. to do your thing. And it's not like Jonathan Shaw was a bad tattooer. Right. God, your microphone is so screwed up here. Hold on, let me get this. Sorry, everyone. There we go. No, this is great. I I love this. Mm -hmm. No, it's super rad. And I love these ads. Um, Especially now, I've been going through like a real like outlaw comic, which is like I associated all those like 80s comics where they were black and white as always like some like, you know, rogue you know revenge story where you're just like going through like the city and like murdering a bunch of people Um, but it had like these same vibes like (laughs) i don't know it's the paper it has something to do with the paper and um and whatnot heavy black yeah um a lot of the same uh andy cap didn't we see that that before no i don't i don't think so that one caught my eye maybe i i was just maybe julie commented the, the old comic yeah um, there's some rad business cards in here. That is tight. Personal art. Yeah. It's so um, 90s. It, as well, fuck. it just looks like a like a hair salon or mm-hmm. something. For sure, hairs to This you. one, the um, custom. What is that? Oh, custom by Gary Tattoos. God, uh, that almost. I wonder if that's the, one of the dudes I used to work with. The Scully head dude is holding a business card on a business card (laughs) he's holding a business card on a business card that's like some sort of breakthrough or something that's and there's a skull on the other business card that's really uh, that's i'm a fan that guy had some ideas let's track down gary yeah he'd clearly be able to make your uh your dreams come true badass it's more lots of cards dude tons of cards in this issue Vinny's tattooing that's got some really cool stuff on it I like this little like rocker chick. I can't tell what the fuck any of that says, um, but the tribal and the kind of punker chick is is cool. Yeah, graphic design wasn't really like a a household uh, term, I guess. It's kind of a trip. 
This is fantastic. Dude, that one's great. Skin works. Well, it's just really good um, design, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Great design in that and realizing, like, of light and dark. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, people don't know how to fucking design that shit now. That shit pops. God, it's just page after page. This one's good, too. I feel like anytime you get a little machine, a little pinup or something like that, it's rad. That one, <laughs> so tough. this guy's really in it. Yeah, you're going to get the biker clientele. You're going to get the kind of gothy kid, maybe. <laughs> right. <laughs> I like this one where <gasps> holy shit. there's the faces on the arm, and this face is melting into the her lower lip is part of the glove. Yeah. Ooh, Fuck I, yeah. What? I like that he's wearing a glove. Right? You know? He's promoting. He's going, hey, guys, I wear gloves. Come on down, man. You'll get some clean work. Well, he's working at and Tattoo Land in 1992. So, I mean, they were probably doing... That's pretty badass. Yeah. And then, I mean, you can't ever go wrong with just the little mm -hmm. symbol rose. You world, want a rose? World-class tattooing. So you want a rose? Best cup of coffee in the world. <laughs> you did it! <laughs> Best cup it. of coffee in the whole world! <laughs> What do we got? More another Philip Blue. Yeah, who's this one for now? Tech oh, this is advertising him working at Fun City. That's pretty badass. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember that. I mean, I, I I probably got all captivated in the artwork and didn't necessarily get the message of the of the ad. Well, I mean, here's what you had to do basically, mm -hmm. right? Because there wasn't Instagram. There wasn't really the there wasn't the internet. I mean, mm -hmm. there was, but it wasn't. It was mainly just school systems were using the internet. People were so, still figuring out how to email each other. Yeah. Um, but, so, like, you're going to do a guest spot for, like, probably if, if you're coming from Europe, you're going to come for a couple months, I'm right? Sure. yeah. So, yeah. fuck yeah, you're going to draw a full-page ad. Um, and so tattoo. Good. And he'd clearly already been here for a minute because he's doing yeah, he's already that doing back ads. piece where he's, this back piece where he's advertising, mm -hmm. oh, 1989 work in progress. So, um... He clearly had probably came there a couple times, and he's advertising that he's coming back. Yeah, man, he's definitely put up some stakes. Just the use of, like, the little bit of texture here, this one. Well, this is That's all, like, really classic, so classic kind of comic booky texture. Mm -hmm. And this is, like, obviously Japanese um, kind of armament texture. But there's some a bunch of stuff he's kind of ripping from comic books and um, a bunch of different illustrators from the time. He's a great illustrator. Fuck, he's a good illustrator. Kevin Quinn again. Julie's tat dad. Killing it. Yeah, that thing's cool. Mm -hmm. Nice big dragon. Yeah. It's all really solid, too. Man, you really are seeing a lot of repeated... Um, a lot of the same artists in here. Mm -hmm. And that may just be because... Maybe they just knew these people and and wanted want to get the good artists they knew um, that weren't getting maybe some of the light or something. I, I think that's kind of what I felt with skin art was because it started out really strong. I mean, this magazine is is killing it so far. This is issue two, and all the work I feel like is of a certain caliber. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas like Outlaw Biker and like Tattoo Magazine, which are, is coming out at the same time, um, you know, you'd have a couple really good pieces on a page. But then you'd have some shit, some dog shit. Right. Whereas I feel like, sure, you could rip apart certain things on this page, but pretty much everything on this page, especially for 1992 standards, is fucking great. Absolutely. The, the ghosty mermaid Dude. thing is kind of blowing my mind right Dude, now. Dude, it's rad. Her hair turning into these uh -huh. like scully ghost shit. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's just a really really good classic kind of god i feel like you'd see something like this now mm -hmm. I, was, I was definitely gonna say that that is back in a big way you know like this kind of black and gray simple but it's like it's kind of rendered but it's still traditional right full covered full yeah. covered shading it's like somewhere in between like you know um like an la chicano style and a very like bold traditional mm -hmm. american style i could see that dude it's cool and I think just, yeah, really forward thinking for the time. Philip Blue like, with a twisty tattoo machine. Mm -hmm. Fuck, I wanted one of those so hell. bad. God, I wanted one. <laughs> it's so shiny. More Dave Lum, more Guy. Fit Buchanan, which we've seen a couple times. I just didn't comment on. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but that's a pretty great piece. It's solid as heck. I mean, I don't really quite get this little, like... She's dreaming. Yeah. It's She's telling this tale of when, oh. her, when her ship went down. Mm. So it's kind of a dream. It's a bit of a flashback within the tattoo. I see. God, that's so... You're smart. Thanks. You're a smart one. I try. Jill Jordan again. That one's wild. Oh, the dagger. Always. The dagger will never... Dragonfly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of little tweaky shit in there. The bird is pinned to the leg. Oh, whoa. As well as impaled by the... Well, and if you look at this, uh, the snake makes part of the cutaway on the where the dagger is going into as well. There is so much penetration in this. There is a lot <laughs> going... There's a lot of ideas in that one. All right. More Philip Blue. This thing's pretty psychedelic and weird. I like that yellow teeth thing that it's going on there. Yeah. And that it's not outlined. Yeah. I mean, you'll see grime rip that shit. Mm -hmm. um, hella in the, in the two thousands. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I feel like that thing rips grime and a lot of other people, myself included ripped a bunch of that shit from Philip. I was probably ripping it from grime, not realizing he, he ripped it from Philip blue back in the day. Goes. Uh, if I'm if I'm quite honest, I like this weird little fucking tribal swirl, whatever kind of. If that's a, I don't um, know, almost a swazi. Almost a swazi, but yeah. So shot full of holes. Yeah, it's it's pretty weird. It's kind of cool though. This thing's rad. Mm-hmm. Little Debbie lens once again. Yeah, that thing is cool. Fuck yeah. We've entered the traditional realm. Dude, that panther head is sick. That's yeah, a tough panther. Ah. I think the only thing I wish is uh, there was whiskers. That's the only thing I want. No whiskers. It has no whiskers. What's a cat without whiskers? Um, and its eyes are a little cattywampus. Mm. Um, but fuck, that thing is cool. Once again, kind of riding that line between kind of like fine line and traditional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's definitely a '90s tat. I love all this dude's like rockabilly tattoos, and like I can barely see half of those, other than the Woody Woodpecker, like with his stand up. Mm bass or right, whatever right, right. oh do 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 i'm a rockabilly rock 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 oh man you ever work with any rockabilly dudes <laughs> Absolutely. oh my god it's so difficult <laughs> yeah and then the rockabilly girls man they put that on every day <laughs> every day that's every a lot. day with those with those betty page bangs well, huh? and hair like, curlers mm -hmm. and uh my friend Susie just posted something on instagram the other day and it was like some little meme and it was like of a rockabilly chick like outside like standing against a car and she's like you'll be so impressed with how this i can't remember exactly what it is but it was like talking about like just like putting your tits out on on front street in every dress or whatever the uh saint Pauli girl oh, the saint Pauli girl a pistol and a bag of money oh shit that is like an idea uh-huh there was this guy um Man, Minneapolis at the time was just always like so many ideas. Like still in because being in the Midwest, tattooing starting tattooing in two thousand, there were still a lot of hangovers from the nineties and mm -hmm. even the eighties. And like you were definitely we were getting all the ideas. And I remember like this one guy came in and he's like, I want me, but it's not me. <laughs> and I want like me holding my bitch's head cut off. And I got a nine, you know, and he said, he's saying, he's like, you know, like a nine millimeter in my hand. And then uh, what he's like, and I got a snake wrapped around my leg, but it's got my son's face on it. <laughs> and then I want her, my bitch's face saying, why Tennessee, why? And he did that vo high voice and everything too. <laughs> oh my God. And I just was like, fuck yes. Um, and then I think I quoted him for it, and I never saw him again. Man, but this reminds cool. me of that. Like, <clears throat> I want the St. Pauli girl, mm -hmm. but she's got a bag of, money bag of money and a nine millimeter. She's stacked. And she's stacked, too. This panther is, like, weirding me out. Yeah, it's not it, great. It, he looks like he's kind of sneaking. Sorry, Jonathan Shaw, you missed on that one. He's got three claws. Well, it's just like trying to revamp the that panther pose, but yeah. not doing it. Kind of a, yeah. Yeah. You can't always can't always win. Dave Lum, solid tattoo. Mm -hmm. um, they're not all going to be masterpieces. They're not all, and I mean, I think that's a really, you know, where in this day and age with Instagram, I feel like everybody wants to see that masterpiece. Oh, absolutely! And yeah. they'll scroll right past that motherfucker too. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I do it myself. You're like, oh, well, another amazing back piece, mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and just like take it for complete granted. Whereas like, I feel like back at this point, you're like, oh, cool. Look at this, this, you know, eight inch fucking Panther dagger I did, you know? Yeah, yeah. You can study it and really look at it. I think Instagram in a way, I mean, it, it's obviously like just uh, uh, pros and cons all day long with, with uh, the internet. But I think in in the format, in regard to the format, it really does tattooing a disservice. Well, yeah, because it's like everything. It's like Amazon. It's like Uber. Mm -hmm. All that kind of stuff. It gives into this um, instant gratification culture, right? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what yeah. you know. Like even if I think about it with these magazines, <laughs> something of why I like these magazines a, a lot and why I wanted to go through them was because it reminds me of a time of like I didn't get to see tattoos all the time. No. You know, I didn't get to see him and it was a, it was a treat, you know, for me to go through it. and I would go through one of these magazines over and over and over mm -hmm. again until the next one came out right. a month from then. Right. Or you would just, you know, uh, bite the bullet and buy that magazine, you know, is going to be a piece of shit because there's just more to look at in it. You know, it was something to see, you know, because you'd see a bunch of shit but then you'd be like, oh, cool. Look at that dragon. That's cool. Look at that, um, you know, gypsy head. Yeah, the old Sailor Jerry. I like that dragon a lot. I like Johnny's Harley Angel a lot. You do? Well, I, I conceptually. <laughs> I, I'm a little bummed that the apostrophe S is not on the banner. Uh -huh. That kind of bums me out. But I like that they put um, the Johnny's is all uh, kind of this negative space of sorts. There's no coloring in it, but this one has coloring in it, and it makes the two kind of stand it's out a little so bit. It's so weird. Oh, there's yeah. Philip and Tatine. That young. Dude, I would kill for one of those shirts right uh -huh. now. Those are cool. This caveman with a mallet given uh, one I of his remember other cavemen. That one. You remember that? Yes. Oh, that is cool. I don't know why that eagle has two heads. I kind of just wish it had one. I'd rock it. I wouldn't give a fuck. It's not a law biker shirt. It sure as fuck <laughs> it is an outlaw biker. <laughs> oh, that thing is These so cool. These need to be in reprint. They need to bring these back. Yeah, please. Um, sell the fuck out of that. Tattoo magazine, which I, I know you're still around, which I don't think Outlaw Biker is anymore, but just reprint those. Consider it. Please. And then right above it, Tattoo Kit. Heck yeah. I mean, I don't know how many times I thought about picking up one mm -hmm. of those. What do you get? Is that... Do you recognize that? You get a set of ink. Um, is it just spalding colors? I think it's just spalding colors. Um, Here's some... Oh, those are like a dry lock bandages. A bandage. You get a box of gloves. Shit, you get a spray bottle. You get a spray bottle, some Starting green off, soap. Right with some green soap, man. One razor. Uh -huh. You get one razor. Uh -huh. um, I think this is a bunch of stuff for making needles right here. And when you're not tatting, you can be sure to be recognized as a tatter when you bust out your keys. Your fucking <laughs> tat keychain. And it comes with, uh, with vellum, drafting vellum, and some flash. What a trip. That's solid. I, I, you could probably for work. For what? Is Four hundred and seventy-five bucks with shipping. That's that's I mean, highly reasonable. That's two machines in the power source alone. Fuck yeah, you can't buy a Dan. Uh, you can't Dan get a Cuban, Cuban for that for fucking <laughs> under fifteen hundred dollars these right. days. And then you got to start from there. Dude, Paul Booth with some color. Crazy. I wouldn't yeah. believe it if I wasn't looking at it. I know. I mean, I was so obsessed, and we'll get into it when some of those two thousand mags show up. Mm -hmm. um, but man, I was obsessed with Paul Booth and like. The very end of that, like '98 to like 2002. I, I was, I've always been troubled by skulls with no teeth. And it was a, it's a certain period of time, mm -hmm. you know. It's it's the uh, the, the time of the twisty tattoo machine mm -hmm. and skulls with no teeth. Well, and it 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 got drug out because it, remember, um, God, what's his butt in Oregon? Who's his butt? I'm forgetting his name right now. I should remember his name since I've worked with him a million times and whatnot. <laughs> Anyways, he like did he fucking drugged that skull out with fucking no teeth for a million. Remember, he always had like light coming from behind the eyes and shit. Sorry, I'm forgetting your name. I don't know why I'm doing that. You're probably not watching this. Another Kevin Quinn tattoo. That's a very different style. It is. I'm guessing this is probably like some art that he's recreating. Yeah. Um, this I'm bummed that this is. Is that, um, what's that's your butt from, uh, Stevie Nicks? is that Stevie Nicks? I think so. Dude, that's cool. With those nice, like, little fine-laying flowers behind mm -hmm. it. 
That thing is dope. I really wish they had the artist on that. Unknown. Kenneth Fong on this headdress lady. Elo. Klaus Fumheyer, Austria. Theo Jack. Mm hmm. Some there early biomech. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's an early guy, too. Yeah. So that's before he's kind of. Yeah, you know, he's just putting he's every toying fucking, with it. Yeah, yeah, well, he's just putting every color in the coloring book. Right, it has like no real like I don't know. Some shapes work with the body, but mm. this, I don't know. This stuff's weird. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, you're gonna. You gotta drop some pipes somewhere. You gotta drop some pipes. You don't have pipes <laughs> and some early, you know, tattoo shit. These Philip Blue eyeballs are dope. Uh huh. Little demon eyeballs. Fuck yeah, those are really cool. cool. Another guy piece. Dave Lum. Mm hmm. Mark I like that orca. That's a weird. The water is a little odd. Uh -huh. um, it seems like the head's getting bigger. Is that a perspective thing? or? It yeah, just... it's a little like trying out some forced perspective <laughs> shit and not really nailing it. Oh, Bill Salmon. That's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. He kind of nailed the tie-dye, though. Uh-huh. That that I would be it. a hard thing to do. Like, yeah. imagine if somebody said, oh, and I want the bear wearing a tie-dye shirt. Oh, it's like, uh, Levi will take good care of you. Here's his card. You know, I would really, actually really love to do that. It sounds kind of fun. Okay. I did this psychedelic, uh, not that long, like, probably, like, I don't know, um, maybe eight years ago or something like that. I did a half sleeve of this woman, and she wanted, um, she wanted a bunch of music notes and stuff like that. And I was like, well, okay. I'll do that. I was like, but do I free reign for however I want to perceive that? And she's like, sure. I just want a lot of color and I want music notes. And I made it this crazy psychedelic thing where it's like the music notes were melting into one another or somewhere like starting to turn into flames into like a smoky background and stuff like that. Awesome. I had a lot of fun with it. Awesome. This is fun. And how hard is it to, to pack bubblegum pink Especially in that time period. Right. Is that a bar of soap, you think? I think it's a brick. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's, in, he's about to get into some trouble. Or he's going, no baths! Kevin Quinn uh, kind of taking off some Jack Kirby stuff right here. That's mm -hmm. what this is. Mm -hmm. I like that Jonathan Shaw um, tribal and skull. That thing's cool. Oh, I really, really I hate picture. the placement, though. It just bugs me yeah, that it's right it's in the middle there. It needs to be there or there. Yeah, yeah. Why does That's, everybody always want to do it in the, uh, the break of the arm there? I, the client or the tattooer? Because I the feel client, like, the tattooer yeah, usually knows like, to put can it. Can I can I put it in the ball of your shoulder or? But the client always wants it right yeah, there. It's like sh their concept of showcasing it. This guy is fucking killer. I wish there was a better picture of it. Oh man, I used to rip on Guy Aitchison's, um his like figurative stuff all uh -huh. the time because that. Uh, I'm not going to hate on it now because like, I don't know, just a perspective in time and my own realization of like getting into different things and whatnot. But there was something, one of the last sleeves that he did where it had like a, a figurative thing in it. And I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, I, I'm guessing this is Timothy Hoyer. I'm gonna I'm gonna probably guess. Ink spot two. And I'm sorry, Timothy, but you missed on that one. That it's, one's it's looking like a weird penis dragon thing. Rubber eyes. Yeah. But I mean, he kills it every time now. Yeah, pretty much. I like how Timothy Hoyer like takes off. He does like I think last time I talked to him about it, he's like takes two months off and he does painting for two months and then he'll switch and he does God. tattooing for two months. He gets to do that. Kill Monty. Yeah. The the um, let Text. lettering is, is whack as fuck. <laughs> and it got away from him. Dude, I love how he's, he's wearing the hat super high like like y'all would in the 90s. It's so good. Just wearing that fucking... Yeah. Don't pull that thing over my eyes. I want to no, see the... Up on pinky. top. Or Philip Blue on both of these right here. I don't really like either of those. No, that's a really weird Philip Blue. I would guess it's probably from a comic. Right. But I could be wrong. Maybe redrawn from some something. This is this is taken from a book. I have I have the book for sure. Nice, man. Dude. Theo Jack's got a lot of work in this on the road as well. Yeah, yeah. That on the road Dude, that thing is rad. Um, I is that uh, what's your butt? Susie from? Sue. Susie Sue. Yeah, 
Dude, that thing is cool. Mm-hmm. God, I love portraits that are done like traditional-ish mm-hmm. like that. Man, that's, that's cool. That looks like straight out of the Crow comic. Yeah, yeah, I'm a fan of that. Damn, that's, that's great. rad. More. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much there's like a Theo Jack, Philip Liu, and Guy Aitchison tattoo on every, and Jonathan Shaw on every right. single page. Which, and this one has literally everybody here. You've got Vivine, Philip, uh, Theo, Guy Aitchison, and Jonathan all. I don't like this tattoo, but I like what what's being attempted. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some ideas there that I think will probably later on get mm-hmm. fleshed out a little bit more. I've seen I've seen Vivine do stuff like this um, to a better extent, I'm even sure. in the last ten years, cool. and, it's, and it's it's a little more thought out yeah. and understood. I'm, I'm feeling it, but it's a bad tattoo. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like we said, we can't win everyone. Damn, Lum. Yeah, Lum didn't. Uh, I don't know with the fucking skullet and uh-huh. shit. Holy shit. Shit. Man, this is wild that armband, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's done pretty well. It's very solid. <laughs> that brown is all that inner stuff is super uh-huh. small and it's it's tight. Mm-hmm. It's tight as fuck. The beadwork. More early bio from guy with eyeballs and like this has like a Dave Lum feel if Dave was to do, right? You know, biomech or something. I I want to I, I want to think like it's it's uh, biomech was coming in, but it didn't really have like a super clear definition yet. Well, they weren't really referencing um, Geiger, Geiger, yeah. Geiger. Which uh, right around this time, I'm not around this time. It's probably a little later. My mom took me. I was thinking about going to school in Boston. I still have the books. I just unpacked them. I was obsessed with Giger. Oh, yeah, you were. Obsessed. And I still have these books. I got them in probably 1998, I want to say. So probably right when you started tattooing. My mom took me to Boston because I was looking to go to college at the museum, or the School of the Museum of Fine Arts Boston. Awesome. And uh, she, I think it was around my birthday and whatnot too. Um, and... She let me pick out, we went to this museum, in the museum, there's a museum there, and she let me uh, pick out whatever I wanted to buy. I could, like, have, like, a b- early birthday present or stuff like that. And I bought these two giant books. You're not going to see them. I'll go sideways with each of these. Here's the Necronomicon 2 and the Necronomicon 1. I think one. I've only seen one. Wow. And, you know, like, if I really think about, like, a lot of stuff that's in here, I'm kind of surprised my mom let me buy a lot of this stuff. There's, like... Oh, man, it's sex on top of death. Yeah. <laughs> and I was painting so much stuff like this. I mean, like, look, look at that. It's just a woman, naked female form, or all these fem- forms turning into giant penises and stuff like that. I was obsessed with this shit. <laughs> so fucking obsessed. And I still remember uh, we had this class where, and my art teachers just kind of gave up giving me assignments, and they were just like, all right, here's some big rolls of paper. Cool. Go, go hang it up in the hallway and do whatever you want. And as long as you finish it, you get an A or whatever. Nice. And I was just drawing shit like that. Like black and gray women with like decapitated heads and shit like that. <laughs> to draw in high school. I'm noticing that the introduction by Clive Barker, that's pretty cool. Did you ever read any Clive Barker? I never did, no. Mm. Um, I, didn't, I didn't really get into, because um, what do you do, the Pinhead series or whatever, or Hellraiser? Yeah, well, before that, a lot of uh, horror short stories, yeah. which I was a big fan of. I didn't really get into them, and I feel like at this point, like Clive Barker was just getting his name put on everything. I think so. I mean, there was yeah. like a series of comics that he literally had nothing to do with writing, but they just like bought the rights to putting his name on or something like Interesting. that. And I remember picking up a couple of them and just being like, oh, maybe these would be cool, kind of cool horror comics. Right. And they were just garbage. And I was like, fuck Clive Barker. Fuck Clive Barker. So I probably didn't even read the intro ever. But Who does? I don't have many stu- many things from high school from that period of time because I was just like a – my mom kicked me out of the house when I was 16. or She, she likes to put it – uh, she gave me the option of leaving or, or <laughs> living underneath her rules or whatever, and I decided to leave. Gotcha. So I left the house when I was 16, kind of came back every once in a while, you know, because I was still a 16-year-old kid. Um, 
But so I don't have a lot of things. I don't have a lot of photos. I don't have a lot of art from back then because I just would throw it away or it would get we get kicked out of whatever fucking right, squat right. we were in and all my art would disappear. But I managed to hang on to these. I managed to hang on to both these. Hang on to the books. Everything else can go. Yeah, everything else can go. Give all the art away. Um, cool stuff. I like the, the thing from Vivine again. Mm -hmm. I like this sleep from Cool Skull from Philip. Oh, Walt Daly. Man, did I want... And I'm so glad I didn't fucking do this. Oh, my God. One. A La Bray piercing? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I definitely had a Lebre piercing at this time. Yeah, of course you did. I did um, too. No, no, no. I had two. Oh. I had gotten one, decided that was lame, took uh -huh. that out, and then got the snake bites, I think they call it. I think it's called the snake bite. Um, yep. And I still remember I had it up until like 2008 or nine, And I remember uh, I was still drinking at the time. And I'm in a bar and there's this friend of mine who just like was such like a close talker and like kind of really annoying and he came up and he had just gotten them done and he came from the piercing studio and he sits next to me at the bar he's already got fucking booze breath and he's just like look bro we're fucking twins <laughs> and i literally just like no, i was not. like nope looks like we're done with these and i just took them out of my lips right there threw them in the garbage and just That's like was funny. done with them but more what i was saying is the moco man sure. i wanted a moco so bad and my coworker around 2000, I wanted right when I started fucking tattooing. And he's like, I'm not going to fucking tattoo your face. Thank fucking God. <laughs> Cause like this guy. Yeah. This do guy, I really need pupils, to, do I really need to be another white dude fucking with a moco? Right. And a teardrop. Oof. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I used to say, uh, I can't anymore, but I used to say that I'm grateful to every tattooer. It was sitting in a shop with me when there was nothing going on. And I was like, will you tattoo my face? Yeah. And they said no. Ugh. <laughs> I have, I've got a tattoo under my chin. I've got a nautical star under my chin. I, I mean, I never see that because I got right. a beard and it's <laughs> right. underneath my chin. But, uh, you know, I've got my little face tattoo and my boss, my old boss, Shane, at the time, me and my friend, we got them. We were all drunk, went up at night sitting in a, um, a White Castle parking lot. And then I think, and then I think we went to his house. We got drunk. We were sitting in there. We watched all this like crime unfold at the bar that it was always crazy popping off. And they're like, "Let's go back to your house and drink." And then we were like, "Let's get." We call them punk rock beauty marks, and uh, we each drew them. And he got this little diamond on his side of his face, and I have my little heart with um, little crossbones. crossbones on mine. It's held up. How old is that? Uh, I think I got it in probably like two thousand five maybe six those are small lines yeah no yeah. it's good shout out to shane thanks for thanks John, at shane. least making it a good one <laughs> and and shout out to every tattoo i ever worked with for probably a solid like five years who didn't give me a fucking moco same because i am so glad that i'm not a white dude rolling around with a fucking moco big time god damn <laughs> nice fuck yeah that's that dude vampire holes mm -hmm. have, have you done the vampire bites? lots lots yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. i i was pretty stoked like probably by the time i was doing my last one at, at how i you know handled it that's fun here we have a very quintessential dave, <laughs> dave lum tattoo i hate it <laughs> a weird drunk um rat with hangy boobs and a you know like big drippy big drippy vagina <laughs> oh that is that's what i think of when i think of dave lum right more cocks though definitely yeah and see another one here you go oh. it's like a butterfly with boobs and smoking a fucking pipe right what were you gonna say this is that's cool kind of a trip yeah i i wouldn't expect that coming out of the 90s really that's it seems a little more uh current yeah. And I would say it seems more 80s mm -hmm. when everybody was getting kind of... Oh, yeah. You know. Then there's that. Current is... Uh, current else. is very almost mm -hmm. 80s. Wow. Fuck yes. And Bill. Bill nailed that too. Dude. That is such a trippy concept. Wow. <laughs> They'll never take my hair. That's kind of cool. I, I really... I, I like the, the idea of it. Mm -hmm. It's bizarre. It's fucking it's so well done. Yeah. I mean, I feel like 
with something like that, like if you really understand probably why somebody is is mm-hmm. wanting to get that, like fuck yeah, you're gonna put that extra time and effort into it, mm-hmm. right? I think like you could look at that and just be like, oh, what the fuck, this guy got a fucking weird ponytail. But if you don't really understand like probably why that person was getting it, right, right. Um, yeah, that's a fantastic tattoo, dude. That is cool. It's really well done, and it looks like it's probably taken. I bet it's taken from a photograph from where when that person actually Maybe had that hair or long, something, right? Yeah. Super cool. This uh, Jonathan Shaw. Yeah, looks I, a little bit like Alfred E. Newman. I think it's from some horror comics, um, if I remember right, from the um, probably like the '60s or something like that, or mm-hmm. earlier. I, I would almost bet, and he's trying to achieve some of those like textural elements, and it's just you know not aging well right. Al- already. I mean, that's a, definitely just a pile it's of black. Like a whole bunch of that guy's punk. Fuck yeah, punk as fuck. Ah, uh, the devil Elvis. Oh, the Elvis. Elvis, Elvis. Yeah, the devil Elvis is weird. Kind of well, Virgin Mary. The... That was always a thing, too. Oh, like that's a doing... Jesus Elvis. Oh, Jesus Elvis. Mm-hmm. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But the Virgin Mary, but being something else, was it such a yeah, predominant thing? Yeah, I have, I have one of those. Someone? Do you? Mm-hmm. What is it? It's a praying mantis. Oh, that's of, right. You know. mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I did on uh, my buddy, punk rock dude, his name, nickname was Taco. I did um, a Virgin Mary, but like made out of tacos. Oh. So like her body is a taco, but she's wearing the traditional, and her hands are tacos too, I think. That's pretty great. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, I, a little like backstory to, um, to mine. My, my Virgin Mary praying mantis was the second tattoo I got by the same guy, Dano Sanchez. And um, I got that shit. It was before I started tattooing. So mid 90s. Mm-hmm. Uh, how old am I now? It was when I was like at least 18, 18, 19. Um, and about three years ago, um, I was visiting him at Magical and he came up to me and his eyes were all big as shit. He was excited and he goes, I have something for you. <laughs> and uh, he pulls out this this folder and he said, out of all the times I got kicked out of apartments, left in the middle of the night, went broke, pawned every fucking thing, was in jail. I still have this drawing, and he had the pencil drawing for, oh, cool. for my tattoo, and he gave it to me. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to do with it, but it's pretty fucking neat that it's still around. Some cool, th- this has got pretty good color theory. I like I like that it grabs my attention right away, mm-hmm. you know, and that's really what you want. Mm-hmm. Um, probably an expensive ad too, all full color. Tattoo review. Another. Is this another, another Spalding one or no? Oh, it's like it's the Kaplan set, the Joe Kaplan one. Not um, a bad set. Not a bad set. I think those machines were actually pretty pretty solid, um, for a you know just a kit or whatever. And I think the colors were actually pretty good too. I was gonna say those look like uh, it looks like a national product or for a bottle, sure. and yeah, then yeah. I think they, they might have been out of national maybe. I think they skipped on the keychain to make these happen i had the keychain i had that keychain for a while Uh, i'm guessing somebody from the tattoo shop i worked at probably got this kit or something like that and i found it somewhere i was like oh sweet i'm a tatter i'm gonna show it off i'm wondering if you over if you order the kit if these are actually packaged whoa can you see i don't know if you can see twisted that fucking needle bar is twisted Uh I'm gonna show this to the. <laughs> I don't know if you're really gonna be able to see that, but the, on those far right, those upper two ones, those needle bars are twisted. I don't understand that at all. But what the fuck? That's kind of interesting. I wonder if that was just artistically. I just want to do that or what. Sorry, we're just gonna kind of keep going here. Bunch of cool ads again. That ad was around for a long time. You saw that one. Mm-hmm. I don't really remember any of these. Definitely went out. Oh, the old fine line. The days of fine line. Fuck yeah. Dave I definitely Lum. remember the Dave Lum ad. Um, and this one, for some reason, always stood out to me. I, I'd seen products. versions of that done it over and over again. The directory. Ooh, I like how whoever... Somebody marked it, yeah. Fuck yeah, somebody was like, I'm going to... I'm gonna get tattooed from Gil Money. They like that, whatever that wasn't there one With in there that, that Lakers we saw? cap. Yeah, yeah, they're Lakers like, oh, I'm gonna fucking get that, get something like that. Let's see if I can find out Minnesota. Minnesota, what do we got? 
Nothing from Minnesota? Mississippi, Missouri? No. No Minnesota. You know there's no New Mexico. Oh, there is New Mexico. Fine Line. Brian Everett. Oh, shit. Yeah. Really Brian Everett. That's wild. Yeah. Fine Line uh, uh, was kind of a big deal in, in the early days. Like oh, in, it was a huge Line. deal, for sure. Brian Everett and that shop I it was for sure a huge thing. Where is he now? Is he out like in Washington uh, or Oregon or something like that? I thought he was still in um, Albuquerque doing uh, a lot of nipple reconstruction. At least, uh, as far as I knew, that was the last thing I heard him doing. Yeah, you might be right. I, I really have no idea. I'm surprised there's nothing for Minnesota. Let's call this number. Let's see what it is. <laughs> I'm just looking at the Wild magazine. Tattoo. W, mm-hmm. W-Y-L-D-E. Wild Tattoo. Fuck yeah. Oh. Wow. Portraits. That's the... Uh, the classic Nash- National Nat Geo one. Cover. Wow. Yeah. I think you kind of pulled off the eeriness of her expression in it. Yeah, but kind of <laughs> fucked that woman's face up. Did too much noodling, and there's like white in there to like kind of clean yeah. up some of that, and it just did not work. Yeah. No. Sorry, guy. Guilty. Not innocent. Yeah. It's all good. Oh, we've entered black and gray. This Car- Carrie Barba one is mm-hmm. dope. Mm-hmm. I think all of the good ones are Carrie. Look at this. Yeah, Madonna. Carrie did that one. Wow. That Lyle Hardy one is cool. It's super simple. But, like, you could see even with aging, it's still going to mostly hold up. Mm-hmm. You know? The Philip Blue one is cool. Mm-hmm. That thing's dope. Of, of Jimmy. Really well done. Yeah. Tintin. Tintin, that's a pretty good pin, uh, portrait, too. Did you ever have to do portraits at all? I attempted a few portraits. Yeah. And then finally I was like, you know what? I'm not this that is guy. Not my strong suit. I'm I'm not gonna keep I'm not gonna keep down this path. Yeah, I can remember the last portrait I did. It was 2011, I believe. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't done one in years, but nobody else in the shop wanted to do it. Of and, course. And uh, I was kind of all on this kick of like, oh, I'll fucking, I'll handle it. You know, I can do it. Um, and it wasn't bad. I would say, you know, like if we look at caliber as far as a lot of things go, you know, it was somewhere maybe in the Dan <laughs> Williams kind of category. Gotcha. You know, not bad. You understand who all those people are. Right, right. I, I think that was that was the thing that, like, I couldn't get around. Because, um, you know, if someone comes in and they want Marilyn, mm-hmm. someone comes in and they want Jimmy, someone comes in and they want Jerry Garcia, you know, for the most part, you kind of got, like, what their character like uh, what made them look right. like they look, you know, right, it's, like, right. it's like the essentials and you were good. But I never got that. I would get people coming in and they're like, this is my auntie. This is my, my great grandmama. You know, yeah. it's like, I'm, I'm not going to put a pan to your grandma's face and then put it on your arm. Too yeah. much pressure. I mean, definitely. I feel like the standouts on this page are the Carrie Barbara um, mm-hmm. one and then the Philip one for me. I like how that's handled. You like that one? I, I like how it's handled. I mean, it's really, really, um, that thing's going to still look like that probably mm-hmm. today because it's, it's, that's healed in the skin mm-hmm. and it's so contrasty, but mm-hmm. the, the, there's some real grays in there. Whereas a lot of these, like you even look at the light, light grays in that, like all yeah. that stuff is gone. Some now. really good value there. And then just like the treatment of his, of his, uh, yeah. you know, his costume. His yeah. I mean, look. in that respect, I think back on it now and you're probably right. That's probably if any you look at any of these today, that's probably there the most. That thing's dope. You know? So probably the best tattoo out of all, mm. if, you, if you think in that respect. All right. Sorry, portraits. Those suck. We're getting into tribal. Yeah. Let's, let's just skip and go. Oh, Jack. To, yeah. I mean, it's kind of the best one, but that thing's just probably, it's yeah. already not yeah. there. You know, and it's probably, you know, a month mm. or two old. That person's still all stoked on it. Yeah. All right, let's get into some fucking tribal. Check this dude out. Fuck yeah, I should I should grow my hair out and cut my hair like that. Uh huh. I, yeah. I fully support that. Okay, cool. I'll help you bleach it <laughs> when it gets long. <laughs> there was a period of time, um, I kind of had like, there was a moment in my and I wanted to have dreads. Ouch. Probably like, mm, I'd say it's like two thousand, <laughs> maybe maybe two thousand one. I could be wrong. I can't quite remember. But I was really like into crust punk and like all that kind of stuff. And all those crust punk dudes had fucking dreadlocks. That's true. And so um, my friend dreaded my hair one night. We figured out how to do it with like 
honey and eggs and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if you ever heard of like that concoction <laughs> I, mixture. Not that particular one. Yeah, but you yeah. like yeah, you add like honey in like mixture with like just like cracking like a raw egg in and rubbing it in your hair. Something that'll really bring the flies in during oh, the hot God, summer day. Oh God, so bad. <laughs> so we did it and we dreaded out my hair. Um, and it wasn't too long and it got even shorter because it was probably like shoulder length. And then it got to be like a weird little like kind of I don't know what you would fucking call it, Bobby type thing. Like almost looked like Liberty Spikes or something. But uh, I remember I just looked in the mirror right after we finished it and I was like, nope, I'm not going to be that guy. And I literally just hopped in the shower and like it spent, it took like a a couple hours like washing all that bullshit out. so funny. Yeah. Here's another one of those kind of trippy tribal things from Vaveen. Mm -hmm. Um, A little bit more maybe the beginnings of some of those ideas I, I think also she's she's not trying to do anything with the color like she was in the other ones right I, maybe that's a little more successful yeah. because of it kevin quinn doing some graffiti that's letters trip. um this is pretty neat i wish there was a better photo of it yeah uh i wonder what that is i mean it's probably some kind of oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so the pattern is is basically that it's i think it's a bird it's a repeating mm-hmm. bird pattern, if I'm correct. That's so weird. I'm not 100% on that, but I think that's what it, it okay. might be a Polynesian pattern. Gotcha. If, if anybody knows and you know what this pattern is, I'm going to put it up here real quick so you can see it. I think it's a Polynesian pattern, but I'm not entirely sure. If, if anybody knows, put it in the comments. All right. Is it just art? It could just be fucking art. And I'm like, oh, that's this. Mm-hmm. And I, that's why I never want to like be sure. definitive about anything <laughs> on this show. Like uh, a bunch of people have been like, "Oh, you should do, you know, what all these Japanese tattoo means." Nah, and I just don't want to be that guy anymore. <laughs> right. I don't want to be that guy. I don't know. I'm just I'm. You're a dick if you know. You're a dick if you don't. Exactly. <laughs> and there's always some fucking person who's gonna roll in the comments and be like, "Actually, mm. well, this is this <laughs> during that period." If we actually analyze it, the fucking actually, bro. The actually, um, that tribal's pretty cool. I like it, guy. That's bold as fuck. Yeah, it's got. There's like a certain element to it from something that just feels reminiscent, like a um, like a Nash skateboards like graphic or I was something gonna like say, that. Yeah, it looks like uh, some sort of that that tribal brand clothing. Um, kind of yeah pow, yeah, yeah. But I feel like there was like some sort of figure like this but it was like almost like an actual person mm-hmm. formed in tribal that looked a lot like this I don't know if that's what they're pulling from but it's kind of cool mm-hmm. I, it's working for me so you might might have been working off some sort of cross mm-hmm. and then and forward. Then they, they pulled it across yeah guy uh, this stuff is it's just all right yeah it's I, I want right. to like it more than I do yeah well, I mean, it's impactful because of the size, but right. um, you know all that. This gaps, I mean, it's already yeah, man, it's so tiny, and it's already um, it's already kind of. I think it would pop a lot harder if there was, you know, like truly more gap. Like, don't mm-hmm. be afraid to like separate that. I mean, if it was all like that distance apart. Yeah. Or more. Well, that's like when you had oh God. Remember fucking outlining all this shit with a tight three. Jesus. And then yeah, filling it in with probably a fucking round. Yeah. I definitely was at the time it's filling it in with a round. All, all I knew were five liners for ever. I did most everything with a three, and then I think I had some sevens. Yikes. That was it. And then and then, for the longest time, I was filling everything in with um, like a loose nine or a loose 14. Like if, if, if I was doing stuff like this, like big solid tribal, I was filling it in with a 14. And Nice. I still do a lot with a, a loose nine, a lot of fill. Yeah. It's the shit. They're a gr- it's a great um, setup. Here Vivine's kind of doing, it almost has like, you know, this feels like um, stuff that like uh, Tom DeVito would be doing where there's like layers to it. Yeah. Like you could almost see like, oh, maybe some of this was, the color stuff was done before and then I just slapped some of this black over top of it. Right. I kind of like that stuff, honestly. It, it uh, I wasn't going to say DeVito. I was going to say uh, Hardy when he was getting real art with it. Well, I think, I think Hardy was pulling a lot from DeVito. Probably. If I, if I had to venture. Right. It's a really weird armband they gave 
It's such a big spread. Such a here. big. I mean, I guess if you want to go all the way around, you don't really need to. This is the money shot kind of here and here. Mm -hmm. That would have been fine. Kind of guy kind of nailed that one a little bit more. Yeah, that was neat. I like that. It's got some different kind of stuff in there. Whoa! That thing's rad. The industrial guy. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I mean, he's definitely wearing black pants. Uh -huh. I would bet my fucking life he's got fucking uh, like some you know combat boots that have like you know soles yeah. like this fucking thick on them. And big old steel caps. Yeah. What a trip. Steel caps that are riveted on. Mm -hmm. I like this thing. That thing's cool. Mm -hmm. That's rad. I mean, there's some weird elements to it, but um, I think overall it's just, I like the way it flows on the body. Yeah, yeah. Well, is that kanji or is that just... I think it's what? just abstract. Kooky. Yeah, I wanted to kooky. It might say somebody's name. If we turn it this way, is that a K think, and an E? Yeah, I think you're on something. I think something. it's a A. Oh, it says Blake. Blake. B-L-A-K-E. Damn, I could never read graffiti. I don't know how you did that. Yeah. That's about as good as most of my graffiti letters ever got <laughs> to right there. Sick. Here we go. Free videos, everyone. Is that that's even, not a even a shirt not even a shirt. I was just going to say the same thing. I was like, that's not even a shirt anymore. <laughs> Uh, Put on that tatter. The what? Oh. That's nice. like the hair Julie always wants. She just wants like giant big hair. She just found this hairspray. And she's like, I found my, my dream hairspray finally. It, what is What did she say it's called? It's like called like Dallas. Dallas um, Rodeo Queen or something like that is like Sick. the name of it. She's like, it's called Dallas Rodeo Queen. It's like the best hairspray ever. And I'm just like, awesome. That nails down the kind of hair that you want, which is basically that. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty boss. Dude, that watch. That's cool. That's pretty good. Why the fuck is nobody making shit like that anymore? I don't know. I think this is what, this is what we're... Is that what we're... Is that our going to be... We're doing like market research right now. We are doing market I research. So. I really think we could make some fucking money off this. This is kind of tripping me out. All of this is like just by hand. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not even like um, made... I don't, I don't know. You, you can see all the marker strokes and everything. It's such a trip. I think these were big posters. Um, I remember seeing some of I remember seeing the Gil Monty, uh, Freddie Negretti one. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing this Fit Buchanan one. But I think they're big. Yeah. If I remember right. So I think they're like, it. yeah. Edward Dollar Shipping and Handling. How cool. Yeah, if I remember right, these oh. were posters. But it's Maniac Tees. Maniac uh, Tees. Um, maybe they were t-shirts and I'm just forgetting. I don't know. Too. I definitely remember seeing something. I remember seeing this skull one. I remember seeing that panther one uh -huh. for sure. Uh -huh. And kind of this one seems familiar too, but that could just be it's twisty, flamey, biomech type shit. It's chrome. Chrome. Out. All right. That's that one. That we did it. Another one. Fun. Sick. There you go. Uh, I don't know if anybody got anything out of that, but uh, it's a trip down memory lane yep. and you got to see it all. Put it on while you fold your laundry. Yeah. I mean, that's all really any of these videos are good for anyways. Put it on while you're drawing something else or you're folding your laundry. <laughs> all right. Bye, y'all.